So thank you for joining us here today, Joe. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. So can we just start things off a little bit with uh, uh, your background? What do you do and, and how you do it? Yeah, I mean, background, I've been in the, the real estate space for about 12 years now. And um, we, we run a fix and flip business, buy and hold business. Um, we do some multifamily. And uh, primarily at this point, we're doing wholesale in the uh, real estate space. Um, I run a couple other companies as well. And um, now most of my time is spent on lifestyle design and uh, running mastermind groups and um, some events. We run eight to 10 events a year for uh, business owners and executives to learn how to free themselves up and focus on what I call the five F's, uh, faith, family, fitness, friends, and finances, right? Trying to create a little bit of balance in a hectic life. So um, trying, to, trying to get it all down. Sure. You know, it's, it's interesting. You, you said you focused on wholesaling, and I met somebody here today who uh, is getting into real estate investing, and that seems to be the lowest bar of entry where a lot of people start. Is there some tips and tricks on getting people, they're very motivated, but you know, everybody gets into that initial analysis paralysis where it's hard to take that first step. So where do people begin? Yeah, I mean, I tell everybody, you know, the number one step is learn to um, get uncomfortable and learn, get, learn how to get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Like you have to take action and I don't care what business it is. I don't care if you're starting a taco stand or if you're going to, you know, go out and, um, you know, become a salesperson in any way, shape or form. Um, first of all, we are, we are all as business owners, we are salespeople, I, you know, whether or not you tell yourself you're in sales or not, if you own a business, you're in sales. Uh, right. In life, you're in sales, right? You've, you're convincing your kids to get dressed in the morning. You're, you're convincing your wife what you want for dinner. Uh, you're convincing uh, your family where to go on vacation. You're convincing your, um, your employees to, to get rallied up for the day and, and then go out and kill it. Um, you're selling every single minute of every single day. So if you're telling yourself you're not in sales, you're lying to yourself, number one. Um, but you, you have to get... You have to get you know, juked up and get ready and go out and, and get ready to sell. So, um, so that's number one. If you want to get into the wholesale business, learn how to sell. And selling means getting on the phone. Selling means getting comfortable having conversations that might make you a little bit uncomfortable. So, you know, the, the number one thing I see people say, well, you know, I want to, I want to wholesale. They're like, well, how do I have the conversation? What do I say on the phone? What do I say to the seller? How do I convince them that I want to buy their house? How do I convince the buyer that it's a good deal? How do I, what do I say? Well, you say what, what comes, you know, naturally. And a lot of times that, that could be, you know, um, you know, I don't know that answer, but I'll get back to you. Like mm. get comfortable telling people the truth. Right. And, and a lot of times the truth is, is what sets you free. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are afraid that they're going to get on the phone and someone's going to ask them some advanced calculus, you know, question. They're not going to have the answer to, and they're mm. going to bomb. Guess what? If that happens, so what? That's how you learn. That's how you get better. Um, you know, but just take action. You know, so many people are afraid to take action. Uh, and that's why they never succeed. Right. Do you see a lot of people getting kind of uh, tied up in busy work? You know, we kind of romanticize the grind and the hustle. And people get busy for the sake of busy, busy for the sake of being busy instead of actually doing what would progress their real estate like you know like you mentioned get on the phone make those calls instead of designing that business card or logo yeah hg hgas right like they're not focusing on high gain activities like so you're in other words what you're saying is they're filling their schedule with bullshit to make themselves feel like they accomplished something right. so especially when you're new in the business what you're going to do is you're going to come up with this whole long laundry list of to do's that are encircling the actual target, right? So it's basically like you're picturing yourself with a dartboard and you're throwing darts all day long, but you're hitting the drywall around the dartboard, right? So, so you feel like your arm's worn out because you've been practicing throwing darts all day long, but you didn't mm -hmm. hit the dartboard once all day long, right? Your job is to learn how to get on the dartboard. It's to learn how to actually put numbers together. It's to learn how to bring in revenue so that you can feed your family. So the high gain activity is getting on the dartboard. The high gain activity is getting a contract. It's getting in front of a seller. It's getting uncomfortable. It's learning something that day. Most of the time when you're doing all this analysis or you're watching YouTube videos or you're, you're taking in information, all that stuff's great nights and weekends when you're not in, in the sport, when you're not actually out there actively engaging. You know, you got to go out there and actively engage to learn. You got you to get doors slammed in your face to learn, hey, I don't want to do that again. 
right? You have to have conversations and be told no so you can have enough conversations so that one day that light bulb goes off and someone says yes and you're like, holy crap, that's what I have to say in order to get someone to say yes? I'm going to do that again, right? I'm right. going to say that again. That, that worked. Well, mm -hmm. I, I just renegotiated the deal. I just got a buyer to say yes to a deal. I just got a buyer to give me a price. Now I know that's the price for this deal and I can go back to the seller and I can squeak out a fee. That's what a wholesale is all about. And that takes repetition. That takes mm -hmm. getting out there in the game and that takes taking action. You're not going to learn that on a YouTube video. Nobody on a YouTube video is cutting you a $10,000 check. Right. So you want the checks, you got to dive in. Right. So like, let's, two questions that come up. So first of all, you know, how, do, how would a person go about finding that first deal? Oh, there's a million ways to find the first deal, right? And you know this, but you know, it comes from activity. So like, number one is if you have money and you have to, and, and you, and you have the ability to invest, then you have to buy leads. You have to buy lists. You have to buy leads. You have to send marketing. You have to invest in yourself. You have to go all in and you have to get prepared for what comes after that, right? So you start generating leads, take action on those leads, right? Mm -hmm. For those of you that, that are listening and, and I have, people hit me up all the time, Joe, I want to get in the space, but I'm broke. I have two firm beliefs in this business. Number one is, first of all, I came from a real estate background and real estate sales background. And, you know, I'm a big believer in teams. You guys see like these realtors, they grow, they grow teams. There's a reason why real estate agents are really more successful when they come from a team. And by the way, 12 years ago when I got in the real estate business, I, I, I joined a team. Like that's how I became one of the top sales guys in my real estate company is I started out learning from one of the top sales guys in my company. I joined his team and then I, I created my own team. I think wholesale is a team sport. The best wholesale companies you see out there in the space right now are teams. I'm one of the biggest wholesale companies in New Jersey and I have a team. Uh, Rafael Vargas is a good friend of mine. He's down in Tampa. You see everybody flocking to him right now. He's got a gigantic team, right? So you can get experience by joining teams. You can find these guys and you can work for them and you can get great wholesale experience in one compartment or another, whether it's acquisitions, dealing with sellers, dispositions, dealing with buyers. Get experience without risking your own assets and risking your own investment and get paid to do it. It's, right. it's, a, it's a beautiful world. This stuff didn't exist three or four years ago. Now all of a sudden there's teams out there doing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can do it virtually a lot of times. Right. So. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, when we talk about wholesaling, they spend a lot of time regarding the acquisition of the property, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's the marketing and, and cold calling on Craigslist or, or what have you. But I think there's a, there's a piece that is typically missed and that, that's finding buyers. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how, how do you uh, help people find those type of buyers, those cash buyers that can help you close on a deal you're wholesaling too? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of tips and tricks to finding buyers, but I think what people do wrong a lot of times is they think that they have to cast a gigantic web. Look, we have four or 5,000 people on our buyers list and the truth is we sell the same deals to the same 15 or 20 people week in and week out, right? right. There's only so many real buyers in your market and there's a lot of tire kickers. Like if you go to your local RIA, I know there's some really strong RIAs out there, so there's some people listening, right? this is gonna piss them off, but like our local RIA is garbage. There's not that many people in our RIA that are doing deals. There's some RIAs that are really strong around the country, don't get me wrong, there's some really good players in RIAs, but for the most part, RIAs are a bunch of people that are that are looking to figure out how to get started, sprinkled in with a couple people that are actually doing deals. The real deal makers that are out there doing volume, they're not going to local RIA meetups. Let's, let's face it, that's not where they're hanging out. They're, they're actually doing deals. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is you have to get access to cash buyers lists. You have to maybe have MLS access where you can find those cash buyers, you know, skip trace those lists, get in contact with them, prospect them the same way you would prospect the sellers get on the phone with them, make contact, figure out what they're looking for, and ultimately create value, right? When you're talking to a cash buyer, don't just say, you know, what can I do for you? Talk to them. What are you working on right now? Where are you at? You know, what kind of deals are you doing? What kind of deals are you looking for? What's your perfect deal? What does it look like in the last 12 months? What's your favorite deal that you've done? And if I could replicate that deal for you, would you be able to settle by next Friday? You know, right. th those are the things that, as an investor, I want to hear. If you can find me the deal that's my favorite in the last 12 months, I'll buy it 10 times next Friday, right? So go find me that deal and then create value, create an opportunity where there might not be one right now and go find them that deal. 
Mm -hmm. You know, it's all reverse engineering. And these buyers are all over the place, especially in this, in this market. I mean, the market's hot right now, right? Every market has a, a, an influx of, of cash buyers that happened overnight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, something that strikes me right off just chatting with you is how authentic you come across. You know, I, I get the impression that just talking to you on this show is pretty much who you are. You know, like there's a lot of people who put on an air associated with, with real estate. You know, they, they, they're not their authentic self. How, how important do you think that is when you're talking to a seller or a buyer or being on, on a podcast, where, wherever? Yeah, I think it's, you have to live, you have to be 100% true to yourself as much as possible. Look, I, I think, especially in the age of social media, nobody is a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time, right? Let's all face it. We're all, we all have a mask at some point at some time that, that, that we're hiding behind at some point, but the more you can be true, the more you can be authentic, the more you can be vulnerable. Um, you hear this talked about all the time right now. I'm a big fan of Ed Milet. Um, you know, he talks about this a lot. Your vulnerability is what's going to get you indoors or, you know, in, in all different aspects, you know, mm -hmm. people, hire you they, they want to know you're not bulletproof you know the people that hire me to be in my mastermind you know they, they want to know that i can help them solve their problems but they don't also expect me to have every answer to every problem that they've ever incurred right they, they just want to know that i know who to reach out to to get them the answer you yeah. know so it's not as if when they say hey joe i have this issue and i've never encountered it i'm going to sit there and bs them and tell them that i have the answer no i'm going to find someone that has the answer right so and it's the same thing when you're dealing with buyers and sellers if you're dealing with a seller and they have a unique situation, you should not be afraid to say to them, look, I've been in business 12 years and I've never heard of that before, but give me 10 minutes and I'll figure it out. I know who to call to figure it out, right? right. That makes you vulnerable, yes, but it also makes you authentic. And when the sellers realize that your true goal is to actually help them, and I think this is a big piece of it too, when, you, when you're actually trying to help people create solutions for their problems, and you're not just on the phone trying to figure out how to make money, then, then you're going to be more successful, right? right? So come across authentic and be authentic. There's no reason to, to BS people. Right. So you, you brought up the mastermind a couple times now, and as well as, you know, it sounds like a, like a real estate meetup is kind of a double-edged sword mm -hmm. uh, to you regarding, you know, who's going to be attending there. But talk about the importance of of being in networking groups and, and part of a mastermind. And maybe there, maybe you see that as a pretty big differences there. You know, I see a mastermind very different as a, as networking groups, but yeah. Yeah, no. So I, I, I've been, the, the masterminds have been game changers for me. And I think a lot of people look at them in different, uh, in different lights. So to me, uh, about five or six years ago, I attended my first one and, and I, I think just to be, to be very clear, I guess the reason that I bring them up a lot is because they're, they're on my mind a lot. I belong to a lot of them and I run my own. Um, I, you know, it was, it was the biggest game changer for me. When I joined five or six years ago, I had one employee. I was, I was an island. I was doing everything by myself. I was like a, a one-armed paper hanger. I was, done, I was you know, juggling 12 different plates and 12 different hands. And um, I was running a bunch of different businesses by myself. And, uh, you know, at, at that time, I was the epitome of what everyone thought was success. You know, uh, everyone, you know, my friends would, oh my God, you're killing it. It's amazing. It's great. You're so successful. You know, pat me on the back. And, you know, I would go to family parties and they would all be so impressed. And, you know, at that time, I would, I would like go to bed at night and think to myself, like, my God, what am I creating for myself? This is chaos. This is sheer chaos. It's hell. Um, I'm making like really good money and I never feel like I have any money. You know, it goes in, as, it goes out as fast as it comes in. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks I'm successful. I'm driving a luxury car and it's, it's just every, all of this, like, again, wearing the mask, right? I had all these masks on of how successful I was, but deep down inside, I was crushed. I was working a hundred plus hours a week. I was doing everything. I was being everything to everybody. I had clients. I had, you know, you name it. I had rehab projects going. And again, you know, I was, I was the definition of success and it wasn't until I really started getting involved at a high level with other high level business owners that I started to realize that, you know, the lifestyle, the balance, the, you know, engaging in my family, living with intent, you know, starting to really pay attention to the time that I had, um, really focusing on where I'm spending my energy, um, investing in the right places with my finances. Um, you know, really, like I said, the, the, you know, I call it the F5 method, but really those five Fs, focusing on those things. 
um, and spending real, real time on my, my, my own faith and my own self-development. Um, you know, getting into a real paid mastermind is what changed that all for me. And, you know, I believe when you pay, you pay attention. Um, and that's the difference. When you go to these RIAs where you're spending, you know, 30 bucks a year to be a member, that's not what I consider paying. But when you're spending 30000 a year to be in a mastermind, guess what? All of a sudden you pay attention, right? That, that's, that's something that gets your attention. And so when I started getting into these uh, high-level masterminds where, um, again, I was investing real money, um, and in hindsight, that doesn't even seem like a lot of money because I invest a lot more than that today to be in multiple groups, but getting around those people put perspective in my life. Um, and that's why I do what I do now because I know the power and the impact it made to me and it changed my entire trajectory. And, um, it helped me start to focus on hiring great people, getting a players in my life, getting, getting real, uh, partners in my life, getting, um, you know, creating real opportunity for people around me. Um, and then starting to, to really, you know, um, to, to live the way that, that, that I want to, you know, focus on things that I want to do and, and, and so on and so forth. And it's, it's been a game changer for me. So, um, you know, you, when you say that, that I sound authentic, it's because that's, it's the way I live now. It's the way I want to live. And that's, mm-hmm. that's what I've created for myself. So, you know, finding a good mastermind, how did you go about f- vetting or finding these masterminds and, and finding ones that, are a good fit. I mean, sometimes uh, it, it just, what I think uh, a lot of people will do is, you know, we, we've heard time and time again, we're the sum of the five people you hang out with. Yeah. Um, you want to, if you want to take your business to that next level, you need to find people that are in that next level. Mm-hmm. How did you, how did you find them and vet, vet that type of? Thing? Yeah, it started, it started the conversation with my mentor. And actually, ironically, I met on social media, I, I messaged him on Facebook and I said, Hey man, you know, it sounds like, uh, um, you know, it was a very casual, uh, you know, it, it seems like you got it going on kind of thing. And, you know, I'd love to chat with you. And literally it was a, it was a less than 10 minute phone call. Our first, our first conversation. Um, and at that time it was around real estate leads. You know, we had a, we had a, a great back end and we had a great ability to buy. I was, I was rehabbing a lot of houses at the time. Um, so it was leads that we needed. And when we first talked, it was just like, Hey, I can help you generate leads. And I was like, all right, I'm in, you know? And, uh, you know, it was, this, it, it was again, comfortable being uncomfortable. It was the first $5,000 two day event I'd ever done. And within 10 minutes I was like, I'm in, you know? And, and I've always been one that like my word is my word. When I, so I committed over the phone, I hung up and I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe I just came this. I just told this guy I'm getting five grand. But I mean, after I went to that first event, that's when the real, that's when the real, impact was made. That's when I knew the change was going to, was going to occur at a rapid level because the people I went in that room with, you know, they say that you always want to try to be the dumbest guy in the room. And I was by far the dumbest guy in that room. The first time I walked in and I was with real, real game changers. I mean, these were guys who had created massive, massive businesses. And that's when I knew like, Hey, this, this is, this is where I want to spend my time. And, um, you know, from that point forward, it's all been, it's all been, uh, it's all been uphill. Sure. So, you know, like you've mentioned that you have some events that are coming up. I mean, I know you have one that's coming up really fast, but you have one here in the near future. Can you talk a little bit about your two day events? Yeah. I mean, we, we have a two day event. Um, you know, again, it's, it's very, uh, um, uh, modeled off of that first event that I went to six years ago. Only we get a little bit deeper. Um, we focus on the, on the five apps, faith, family, fitness, friends, finances, um, uh, what those things mean, how to, how to create, you know, I think balance is a myth. I don't think you can really create balance in life per se, um, but how to really fit those things into your schedule and still create a lifestyle that you want. Um, I think, uh, you know, a lot of times people um, are so focused on what they need. You know, they're constantly chasing the next best system, the next best mm-hmm. process, the next best to hire, the next best person. But they, what they don't really figure out is what do you really want? What do you truly want first? Because until you really understand what you want out of life, it's impossible to figure out what your needs are, right? So, you know, understanding in that room what it is that you want so that you can actually figure out what you need. When you leave that room, not only do you know what you want, not only do you know what you need to get what you want, but you actually walk out of there with, with definable, um, achievable, uh, smart goals in order to, in the next 30 to 45 days, implement and, and get the things that you want and the things that you need to get those things that you want. So um, I know that was a mouthful, but um, you know, it's different for everybody. Most people, again, when they, when they reach out to us, it's business related stuff. Sometimes it's personal, it's, it's, it's relationships, it's family. 
Um, sometimes it's financial. They're just trying to grow their business from 200,000 to 500,000 or 500 to a million. Um, it's scalability, it's team building, it's lead generation, it's marketing. Um, it could be a lot of different issues, but um, you know, we saw them all in the room. Sure. So talk a little bit about, your, you said you, you host a mastermind as well. What, what caused you to start your own mastermind? Um, ironically, the cause was the people that came out of those events wanted it. Um, you know, I was actually opposed to it for the first couple months. I felt like I didn't want to upsell people. I felt mm -hmm. like, you know, they just invested to come into the room and, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to immediately say, well, you know, I offer this mastermind, but what happened was I've been doing this for about two and a half years now. And after about six months of doing the events, we did our first three or four events. We do them probably every six or eight weeks. We did the first three or four events and, and a couple of people will repeat back to the event. They would come to the event, came to another event. And by the time they came to their third event, they're like, can we just sign up for a year and do and like, you know, get more out of this and, and get more involved and just kind of be dialed in. And I was like, well, you know, I don't know if I want to do a mastermind. And they were like, well, you know, we're going to keep coming back to the event. So, you know, how do we get this more dialed in? So what we did was we offered a, a more robust package, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, once, once a week. Um, team live um, calls where everybody hops on. Um, we go over wins, we go over challenges, we go over what's uh, what's coming up, and then we also do internal challenges. So uh, right now it's just pretty amazing. Uh, we're making each each person in, in each marketplace in each industry because we got you know these these are uh, men and women from all different industries all over the country really um, that are uh, we're making them their their market leader in their own industry through uh, whether or not be an educational product or a book. Um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to skyrocket them in their own uh, particular industry, particular location. Um, so that's pretty exciting what's going on right now. So, so we'll come up with a different challenge, whether it be a health challenge or whether it be a business challenge or, um, you know, again, a relationship, family challenge, but something that falls into those five apps, we'll do that just about every 90 days. Um, and again, it's just to, to shake it up, but also to help people get uncomfortable and push themselves mm -hmm. to another level. So your mastermind isn't just made up of real estate investors. It's, no. it's uh, across industry. That's interesting because I, most of the real estate people that I've run into, they're, they're usually a part just of real estate matter, masterminds. Yeah. Uh, um, how important is it to have the, that variety in that group? I, I would have to think it, it changes the dynamic quite a bit. Yeah. So what I've found is that when you start a group and this, our, our group did start out with all mass, all, all real estate folks. And, you know, it just started to get a little bit dull. You know, it started to get the same stuff over and over again. What, what letters are you sending? What's your conversion rate? What's your lead stuff? And, and what we learned was that, you know, this is, this, is a, this is a life mastermind we're trying to build here, right? Anybody can build business. And everyone in that group, is their business is excelling month after month, month you know, quarter after quarter, year over year. Their business is going to excel as a byproduct of them building their lifestyle, right? So again, when you create... When you start to better every piece of your life, your business is a byproduct. When you start to get better as a person, you're going to get better as a leader. You're going to get better as a, as a problem solver. You're going to get better in your finances. When you start to get better with your finances, you're going to make better investments. Those better investments are going to turn around and be able to reinvest in your business. You're going to be able to hire better people. You're going to become a better father. You're going to become a better husband. You're going to become a better wife. You're going to become a better, better sister. So, when you become better all around, it's a holistic approach to being a better business owner. And that, that's not real estate. You know, that, that's every industry. You can be an attorney. You can be a, an insurance broker. You can be a real estate flipper. You can be, a, you can be anything. You can be a doctor. And a, you know, whatever industry you're in, um, you, can, you can operate within this uh, mastermind and, and become a better person. Sure. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to circle back around on one, on one, one topic. Sure. So you were talking about how you felt really successful and, uh, but you were putting in a hundred, a hundred hours a week. Yeah. Like how, tell me a little bit about the mindset and what you had to do and what changed. It sounded like, you know, meeting your mentor and joining masterminds really impacted you, but there, there seems to be a pretty significant mental hurdle yeah. to go from working in the business versus on the business. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, uh, um, let me just correct you there for a second. I, I, I did not feel successful. I was being told that I was successful and that was the big, right. big, I felt like crap. <laughs> so I, I felt burnt out. I felt worn out. I felt like this is never going to end. I felt like this is, this, this can't be what success is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was, I was making 
you know, really, really good money at that time. And, you know, I had, I had all of the things, I had all the tchotchkes, you know, I, I had the Rolex, I had the cars, I had a nice house. I had, I had all the things that, that, that quote unquote success is supposed to be. And I had people telling me I was successful, but every night I would go lay down in bed and think, I don't want to do this again tomorrow morning. Right. So, so what changed with me was I knew I had to make a change and I also knew I had to change my environment. And those were probably the two biggest impacts that said, okay, I'm going to invest the 5k and I'm going to get my butt out of New Jersey and I'm going to go surround myself with a bunch of strangers that I've never met before in the hopes that this is the shakeup that it's going to take for me to, to level up, to, to get to a different place. And I, I don't even know what that means. You know, I, I don't know what that means. I just know that if I get into a room and, with a bunch of other successful business owners who at the time um, are, are doing all types of different things. I mean, I was in a room with, you know, a business owner that was top in, in, in cabinet sales. I was in a room with a, a huge copywriter. I was in a room with a, another a guy who was doing turnkey, whole, uh, turnkey um, single family deals, which at that time I didn't even know what that was. Um, you know, so like this was a dichotomy of different people in a room. Um, so I got in that room and it probably took me about two or three months to realize, and this was probably the biggest shift for me, that I can't be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. And so within two or three months of being in that room, I decided that I'm going to give up my retail sales brokerage business. My, I'm going to stop being a realtor because I don't like putting on a suit and tie every morning. I mm -hmm. don't like necessarily working with clients one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I, did, I did actually like the process of being a realtor, but I didn't like the minutia of, you know, the home inspection report coming back and a buyer losing their mind because a hot water heater went bad. You know, it was like mm. the drama drove me nuts. You know, I'm, I'm a data guy. I love data. I can't stand when people like literally have a, a meltdown over a home inspection. So, right. so like I knew that that wasn't for me, you know, I, I'm, I'm capable of handling big problems. Like if you give me a massive problem and tell me like we need a million dollars tomorrow, I'll solve it. You know, so, so when someone says there's a $150 hot water heater problem, like, I'm like, dude, leave me alone. So, so like, I've, I've had that, you know, I, I've never was comfortable or happy in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew I didn't want to be a realtor anymore, uh, is, is the bottom line. And when that happened, I decided, like, I'm going to, I'm just going to get rid of the real estate company. I'm going to sell at the time I owned a Remax. I'm going to sell the Remax franchise. I'm going to go be a flipper full time. And me and my new mentor at the time decided Hey man, you know, you only, I had one assistant. I had one employee at the time. I didn't want to have any other employees. I just was happy having one. And we looked at each other and we we're like, you know, your, your assistant is licensed. So what's the harm in, you know, you're paying her a salary right now. She has a license. Why not negotiate a deal where she makes a small split? You give her all the real estate business, the sales business, you go out and do the rehab business. A year from now, we go back, we look at the numbers. What's the worst that can happen? If she burns it to the ground, you're getting ready to sell it anyway. Like it's not, it's not sell it, by the way, we're going to close it. There's, there's no sale. It wasn't worth anything. Mm -hmm. so why not just, if you're going to close it, why don't you just give it to her? So 12 months later, we did that, by the way. 12 months later, we look back. She made more money in sales than I did the year before I gave it to her. Mm -hmm. I doubled my rehab business. I was never more happy in my life. I didn't put a tie on maybe three times for three different weddings and a funeral. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the spark. That was the aha moment that I needed. That was the shift when I said, oh my God, I need to leverage people. I need to bring more good people into my life. I need to hire people. I need to leverage them. It's human capital. I create opportunity for people. And then, and then that's really what helped me start to learn that creating good teams, creating good process, and starting to build from there um, is really what, what built us up to where we are today. I, I built it up to 50 employees at one point. And, you know, we digressed from there. We're down to probably 30 at this point. I started, you know, I, I made a lot of mistakes along the way. Trust me, I, mm -hmm. I hired people way too fast. I got, I got crazy. I made a ton of money and spent it all on, on, on employees and, you know, hired, hired wrong. I hired, hired a lot of right. I hired a lot of wrong. I it made a ton of mistakes along the way. But, you know, here we are. And um, I wouldn't have changed anything. You know, I just, that, that, was, the, that was the crux. That, that breakdown, um, you know, where, where, I just knew I couldn't be an island anymore was the, the big epiphany moment that I had to have. Right. So after going through this, I mean, it, it sounded like a fairly long change. I mean, it, you're talking about a good year for you to get mm -hmm. to that position where you had your aha moment. Mm -hmm. um, what I think is interesting is that I run into a lot of people who go to a, a, 
know that you get those you get those fly by night places that come into town and uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to mention the names but mm-hmm. you know who I'm talking about sure they get them all fired up and they expect this aha moment to happen over a weekend and and you know they're they're yeah. sent on their merry way like how do you keep that fire lit and and you know like I I've, I've had the similar situations where it's taken some time and it take it takes me listening to the same audiobook two or three times for me to get something out, get that yeah. aha out of it. Like, how do you, how do you keep that motivation going where, where um, you, you get all fired up, you come out of that, you come out of that uh, event and, and uh, it seems like the longer people wait, it, it just burns out. So you're referring to the mastermind groups? Yeah. Well, not just the mastermind groups, but you know, uh, I'm going to say, uh, that people get put, you don't, it doesn't sound like your group is a, is a funnel. Like some of these groups that, that come in, you know, I have, we have it here in this market. You can count on it every quarter. Another oh, I got you. Okay. rich, yeah. quick real estate group is coming into the market to teach you how to do this. Yeah, no, I follow what you're saying. No, and then that's, that's why we go straight to high ticket. So like our, our two day event is $5,000 investment, right? So it's, there, right. there's no BS about it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to fill a, a hotel lobby with a uh, hundred dollars uh, a head to, you know, 2000 people to sell them into the $5,000 ticket. It, it's flat out. Look, I mean, I'm going to change your life. I'm going to do it in two days and it's going to cost you five G's. And, and you know, that, that, what I tell people is you're not paying for who's in the room. I'm sorry. You're not paying for, yeah, you're not paying for who's in the room. You're paying for who's not in the room. Right. So like my job is to curate a room with really, really great people. And it's, it's, first of all, it's less than 15 people in the room. Uh, it's super intimate. We're going to get really deep into your shit and we're going to figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work. And it, it can be anywhere from, I mean, I was just in Napa. I had four people in Napa. So it can be anywhere from two people in the room to 15 people in the room. I frankly don't care. I don't, I don't care how many people are in the room. It's just never going to be more than 15 um, sure. because we want it to be tight and we want it to be, we wanted to drill deep into what's, you know, what the issues are. Um, and we want good people. So, I mean, we have people all the time that want to come to the event that I just, I just, you know, I know they're not going to be a good fit. We want people who are going to add value to each other. Um, and it's not 100% me proctoring the whole thing. It's a, it's a lot of people helping each other with business. I mean, I got people um, that, that are, you know, have a lot, a lot more experience in business than I do in a lot of different industries and a lot of different backgrounds. So, you know, there's times when an issue comes up that, you know, we're going to defer to, to, to who's been through it, you know, that, that particular issue. Um, so the room is really there to help everyone within the room and the more they give the more they're going to receive back right and i want givers to come in that room i want i want people that are really going to add quality value to that room now to answer i think your first question is how do you keep that energy level up Mm -hmm. that's what the mastermind's all about right so you're going to leave that two-day event on fire you're going to spend the next 30 days on fire but what happens is just like anything else i don't care if you go to a tony robbins event within three or four weeks you forgot you went to the event i mean i went to upw I was fired up, man. I was meditating. I was doing everything he told me to do. I was drinking alkaline water with lemon in it. Like I was doing all of it. Right? But, like within three weeks, you forgot you went to the event, right? Unless you have Tony talking to you once a week, you're not going to continue that motivation. And that's where the mastermind comes in. Because in my opinion, it's like getting an oil change. You got to come to one of these events every, at least once a quarter. That's why we host them every six weeks. We expect the guys in the group to come to every one, if not every other one, and stay engaged in the actual events as well as hop on the calls once a week. It's an hour, get engaged in the group, help each other out, provide value, keep pushing each other. It's accountability, it's proximity, it's people who can solve your issues all around the country, um, and it's continued engagement. And so that's where the continued push comes. Like I tell people all, all the time, this is a lifelong, this is lifetime for me. Like, like the, the group that I'm in, that, that I started five, in five years ago, I'll be there until I'm dead. I, I will pay that 30000 from now until the time I'm dead. Um, and you know, I'll be on a rocker when I'm 80 years old with my mentor smoking a cigar, talking about all the hundreds of millions of dollars we made and the tens of millions of dollars we gave away. You know, to me, it's about how much impact we can make on the world and how big we can make this thing and how much legacy we can live and how much legacy we can leave. Um, and that's the group that I'm creating within my own mastermind. You know, how big can we make this thing and how much impact can we leave behind? Um, that's to me what, what excites me. That's what drives me. That's what gets me. That's, that's what I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, with that, what, why don't we touch base here now regarding when your next event would be? Like, if people were interested in, in joining you at your next event, where would yeah. they find that info? 
Yeah, I mean, they can go right to my website. It's uh, joevangelisti.com, and I'm sure you'll post the web links in here as well. But yep, um, absolutely. Yeah, I think by the time this thing airs, the next event will be September 21st and 22nd. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they can go on the website, though. We'll always have the event schedules up there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, people that are interested, there's, there's going to be a web application online. It's a quick application, a couple questions, where you're at, where you want to be. Um, and then, you know, it'll push to a conversation with me. We'll spend 10 minutes on the phone, figure out where you're at. Make sure you're a good fit for the room. Make sure you qualify. Um, and if you're qualified and, uh, you know, you want to be there and you're available on those dates, um, you know, I'll set you up. And I always end with, is there a question that I didn't ask that you wish I would have? Oh, man, I think we did pretty good. That was fun. <laughs> I appreciate it. I can't thank you enough for joining me on the show this week, Joe. It was great to talk to you. Absolutely. Man. Thanks. Thanks for having me today.